It's late, I'm eating pizza, and the reason I'm doing the intro to this video here and now is because the original intro that I recorded outside in the sunshine got corrupted somehow. So this is a Rust Logger video, and today I'm working on the MX-5, doing a couple of easy bay shave modifications. So after fitting this induction kit a few videos ago, it really has opened up a lot of space in the engine bay, getting rid of all that stock uh, airbox and, and things. And I've kind of been bitten by the bay shave bug. Um, I've been looking at a few videos online, seeing what other people have done. And uh, some people go completely, you know, total bay shave by hiding wires inside fenders and wings and stuff like that. Um, but there is a couple of things that I think I can do which are actually fairly easy and simple things. And one would be a washer bottle relocation where it's a popular mod with people who have turbos because you need the room for the turbo and the manifold and stuff here. Um, but you can actually get uh, washer bottles that instead of using this one here will actually fit over there underneath the uh, windscreen wiper mechanism. So I've got one of those. It will require some, uh, some jiggery pokey with the tubes and the wires and stuff. And the second thing is to remove the charcoal canister or the EVAP um, tank or whatever the hell this is called. Uh, most people call it a charcoal canister. Let's get this out of the way and remove that. Right, so the first bits I'm going to do is uh, undo these pipes. Now this is the sensor or the solenoid or whatever it's called that will tell the engine whether this system is connected. So this is what we need to kind of keep intact um, to make sure that we don't get an engine light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug it for a moment. If I can work out how to unplug it. go, keep that there, and it might be easier to just undo that bolt, okay so that's a, a little bit easier to get these pipes off. Okay, now this is the fuel line that I'll need to reconnect down here and uh, so then essentially it will bypass this entire canister thing and just go back round into the loop. That just pulled out. We've got to disconnect the bottom hose here. And that's the charcoal tank out. Okay, so now what we need to do is reattach this. This is where the fuel came into the tank. It then gets filtered through the charcoal and then back into this pipe down here. So what we're doing is we're bypassing that. So we need to attach this one to there.
probably shorten this hose to make it a little bit neater. Um, this hose here which goes into the side of the engine needs to be blocked off with a little grommet. So hopefully this is going to work, just bought these from China. Across this little grommet fits on there snugly. There it does. Okay, so this is the item that is going to give us a engine code if we can't fool this into thinking that it's still connected. So you need um, to block off these two tubes here and plug this back in. Okay, so for now I've just uh, done the trick that the guy on the YouTube video told me, which was to tape these up so that they uh, they feel like they've got a vacuum. Um, a neater option would be to loop a little bit of hose around there and clamp them down, which I might do in a minute. But first of all, I'm just gonna check that this hose actually now is sturdy and connected. Here. So basically we've just bypassed the charcoal canister altogether, so the fuel now just goes straight through to here. I put a little grommet on um, on the little nipple that needed it there. This is plugged back in, that's taped off, so I'm going to start it up and see if we get an engine code. Okay, engine's warmed up now. Nothing untowards going on, so I think that has been a success. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to shorten this hose here so that it doesn't have this big loop in it. It's just going to go direct to there, so it's just going to be a continuous run. I'm going to cut a little bit of hose and just loop it over there to make that a little bit neater, I think. And then I'm going to get on to doing the washer bottle relocation and, uh, and put my alloy washer bottle in there, see how that's going to work. Right, well, I just gave it a little bit of a test clean, and uh, that is going to look very nice once I clean this up and get rid of some of these rust patches. I might have to do a, a little bit more of a drastic thing than just give it a wipe down with some alcohol. But anyway, I've uh, I've looped over the pipe a piece of spare pipe in from the from all the, the junk that I'm not using anymore. Loop that over, put those uh, clips back on there. I've shortened this a little bit so we've got a bit more of a, a, a curve to it instead of a big loop. Reattach that, I've got it as close down as I can. It is over the lip so it's gonna be all right. Um, there's not a lot of flexibility left in these rubber pipes because they're so old. Might have to look at getting some, uh, some new replacement pipes and lines for everything but for now that's going to work and that'll be fine. So now I'm going to work on the washer bottle relocation. Right, I've undone the two bolts for the washer bottle there. Um, which was probably a mistake, I probably should have left them in while I undid this plug because it's I hate these plugs so much. I mean, I know they're not supposed to come undone because you don't want them wobbling off. But trying to get the little clip things in to undo them is such a nightmare. Ah, there you go. Okay, so. This is obviously the hose that goes from the pump and the pump wiring, so we need to remove the pump and then see if that fits to our alloy washer bottle or whether that's going to need a modification or not. What I might do is just empty this water out. Okay, 
it seems by just gently levering it. Starting to make some progress. Here we go. Yep, just pops out. So now we need to see how this is going to work with the new washer bottle. That's not going to work. So something needs to be worked out and modified. I'm thinking maybe a, a smaller hose off of this into that, into a wider thing for that. I don't know, I'm going to need to think about this. Right, I'm down in my shed because I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off this um, fitting here and I'm going to drill out a hole big enough to fit the grommet and the pump, the standard pump, into the side there. So I'm going to nip this off with a saw blade and then I'm going to drill that out, fit the grommet in and then hopefully I'll be able to use the OEM pump. Fingers crossed. <laughs> going back now okay so far so good I have uh, bored out the hole to as big as I think I can get it without damaging the underside of the metal there and uh, I can just about get the grommet in there it says whether I can fit the pump into the grommet is another matter okay success that is in let's go and see if it leaks Okay, so it was a bit of a head puzzle, but I managed to relocate the tubes so that they're coming this way to the left and uh, and fit into the pump and the bottom of the washer reservoir now. I've extended the wires. I've just wired it up loosely for now. I'm going to solder these up and tape them up in a minute, but I just want to check and see everything works. So I've put a cup full of water in the new washer tank. We go around, turn the ignition on, and we have water washer jets. I mean, window washer jets. Oh, the sun's come out again. What I've done at the moment is I've fitted this in there, and what I've got to do is drill two holes for these two um, holes there to attach to the bulkhead. I don't know what this thing is called bulkhead, fire guard, I don't know. Obviously I haven't got a drill that I can get in there and drill um, the appropriate holes for it so what I've done is I've sort of scratched where they should go and then using a nail and a hammer I've managed to knock through just a little tiny dent where it should go and now I'm going to drill through that, hope to god it's in the right place, um, drill the other one, hope to god that's in the right place and then I should be able to bolt this to that, um, the other bolt goes here. Um, which has got a captive nut on the back of this so and you can't get your hand in to get any sort of other bolt or nut on there so I don't know what I'm going to do about that yet but once I get these two holes drilled and uh, and bolts through for there I think that's going to keep it in place anyway so we'll see how it goes right well I've successfully got the one bolt in and that is attached there at the back I don't know if you can see because of the light but uh, that is in there. This bolt isn't actually attached to the washer bottle but it does go through the wing and sort of sits in that um, hole there so that kind of does lock it in place and even with just that one bolt in that is really sturdy and it's not moving at all so I'm actually really happy with that. I think I'm just going to leave it with the one bolt save drilling myself another hole pushing my luck. I don't think that's going to go anywhere it's solid as a rock So now all I need to do is just neaten up the wire that I've, uh, I've basically just run, run all the way down it with electrical tape um, just for a bit of insulation. So I need to sort of cable tie this up a little bit better um, to something just so this isn't flapping around and then that'll be job done. Just need to fill it up with juice. And look at all the room we've got over here. Easy bay shave mods that anyone can do. Essentially it's cost me about 50 quid for an alloy washer bottle. 
bit of wire that I already had lying around. Removing the evac canister was free. Um, I just needed a 99p grommet thing to put on the vacuum hole on the um, throttle body. And uh, yeah. Yep, I really am quite proud of that. That's going to do me for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Leave me a comment down below if you've got any comments or questions or queries. I will try and get back to you. And that is it for now. And I will catch you on the next one.